Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. My name is Not Ian Sands. This, of course, is Learn How to Edit Stuff. And today, I'm going to show you a super secret hidden feature inside of Adobe Premiere that you probably didn't know existed. Just kidding, it's existed this whole time. It's a catchy title, I clickbaited you into it. We are going to be looking at the essential sound panel today inside of Adobe Premiere, which is going to help you level up your audio mixing game and give you a bunch of time-saving tips. And if you've never heard of the essential sound panel in Adobe Premiere, I'm excited for you. Today's gonna be a very exciting lesson. Well, I'm certainly excited. I know you're excited too, I think. I hope you're excited too. Open up Adobe Premiere because we are getting started right now. All right, I've got Premiere open and down on my timeline, I've got a clip that I want to play for you, which is going to explain some things. Now let's say that you wanted to put music underneath this interview and you wanted the music to come up in all the silent parts, what would you do? Okay, to answer that question, what you would do if you've never used the Essential Sound Panel before is you would come down here, you would drag in your music track, you would come down here, zoom in, and then you would start setting a bunch of keyframes like this manually with the pen tool, and you would come in here, right? You'd do this a bunch of times, then you'd come in here and you'd kind of like lower it or raise it, and then you'd lower it where you're talking, but then raise it where you're not talking, and then it gets confusing because there's so many keyframes, and then if you have to move all this stuff, it's just annoying. Okay, what we're doing right now is called ducking, right? You are ducking the music underneath the dialogue and somebody asked me in a YouTube comment recently like how do I do this better right and there are tools inside of Adobe Premiere that let you automate this process and using the essential sound panel which can do much more than just automate ducking uh, this is how I would recommend doing it because it's great and it's easy and it saves a bunch of time so instead of doing it the manual way I'm gonna undo all this nonsense because we don't want to deal with this I'm going to come up here to window and I'm going to click on Essential Sound. Now you may have never seen this before because you might not be checking out the window menu and you would think if I came up to the audio workspace that I would see the Essential Sound panel somewhere over here. No, no, you don't. <laughs> so you have to come over here to Window and you have to open up Essential Sound which will open it up on the right hand side over here. And now we have to do a couple things, right? Mainly assign our tracks what they are. In more complicated projects, you might have like layers and layers of sound effects, multiple music tracks, but for this example, just one dialogue track, one music track. So with my music track selected, I'm going to assign it the music tag, boop. And then my dialogue, I'm going to assign it the dialogue tag, boop. And you see a bunch of options come up here. We're gonna cover that in just a minute, but let's click back on our music. And let's go through what we've got here, right? Loudness by default is checked. And if I click on loudness, it'll kind of bring down this little menu and it says not matched, auto match. And if you hover over auto match, it says automatically match the clips to a standard average of loudness for music. So you see how fat my waveform is? Let's listen to it. Now let's say, okay, completely unmanageable. But if we click on auto match, it will actually lower the volume of my music track to a standard average of loudness for music. And now, now let's say, that you wanted to put music much more manageable. And I didn't have to do anything other than assign the music track, the music label, dialogue, dialogue label. And now we can start to work inside the essential sound panel in a more meaningful way that doesn't involve manually adding keyframes and adjusting things and getting confused, which is fantastic. So let's move on. Uh, this one right underneath loudness duration is actually pretty cool. Uh, I wish it worked a little bit better, but basically if I put the checkbox on, it says that my you know, music track right now is 15 seconds and 20 frames. And if I'm working on a video for social media, I need that music track to be exactly 15 seconds. So I can come in here and just set it to 15 seconds and it will automatically shorten the duration of my track, not getting rid of it, not cutting it in any way to be exactly 15 seconds. Now, I don't like this because if we listen to it, It kind of adds in like this weird artifacting. I think it's basing the amount of time on like your pitch. So like the pitch is slightly adjusted. There's like artifacting in it, but the concept is really cool. And if your song is close enough, you can use this to get it to be exactly 15 seconds. The average pure, the app, <clears throat> The average person probably wouldn't notice, but I am not the average person. So I think that this can be improved a little bit. So Adobe, if you're watching this video, please improve that function because it's really cool. It could almost be incredible, but the artifacts and everything, 
not a huge fan of. But I don't really use that one too much, so I'm going to undo that and go back to my original uh, length of my music track. But the thing I do use is the ducking feature. So if we click the little checkbox and we hover over this, it says duck against dialogue clips, and it is automatically set to duck against dialogue. And since we've already assigned our dialogue the dialogue label, this should be fun. And this works based on keyframes that are automatically generated based on sensitivity, the amount that you want to duck your music, and the uh, length of the fades that you want to put in between. So this is nice because we have large open spaces of silence. And if I click on generate keyframes just with the default default values, you'll see that it kind of like lowers the entire uh, music track here and then kind of comes up here at the end, which is not what I want. I want to put all of those little ramps in between all of these. So now we can just start messing with the sensitivity and the fades. So I'm going to bring the sensitivity down to, I don't know, let's say three and a half and we'll bring the fade amount down to 300 milliseconds and let's click generate keyframes. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Now you see that it is lowering and then raising and then lowering and then raising in between all of the silent parts. And you can kind of just keep playing with these faders and it will kind of, you know, move according to the settings that you're putting in here. And all you have to do is just auto generate keyframes every single time, which is extremely convenient because if I had more interview or I wanted to add more to my timeline, and let's just say I duplicated this for the sake of this example, making sure that this is also set to dialogue, which it is. You could also clear the audio type and reset it to something different if you wanted to. But now I can just come in here with my parameters that I've already kind of figured out, click generate keyframes, and it'll do it for the rest. So I can keep adding things to my timeline and just keep auto generating those keyframes. And it's gonna automate all of that annoying work for me. So let's take a listen. Now let's say that you wanted to put music underneath this interview and you wanted the music to come up in all the silent parts, bravo. That saves, that saves so much time. Let's be real, okay? If you're working on documentaries or interview-driven pieces or anything like that, this is going to save you a lot of time and it is great. So if you've never used the Essential Sound Panel before uh, and I'm the first to show you, drop a thumbs up on this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, subscribe to my channel, you know? Any one of those things will make me a happy camper and your audio is gonna be sounding better with this hidden feature inside of Adobe Premiere, which is not hidden, it's been there the whole time, but maybe you didn't know about it. So congratulations. We're doing things today at Learn How to Edit Stuff. But if you remember when we clicked on our dialogue, uh, there is a bunch of other stuff that you can do here to your dialogue within the Essential Sound Panel to affect your actual dialogue track here. If I solo this, now let's say, that you want. The mic was a little noisy. It was actually too close to my computer monitor, which makes it kind of buzz a little bit, kind of annoying, but we can fix that by simply turning on the reduce noise checkbox and then lowering this to a, a reasonable amount because if it's really high, uh, let's put it all the way up so you can hear what it sounds like. That you wanted to put music underneath the center. Okay, way too, it sounds like everything's like low pass, but if I bring it down here to a reasonable amount, maybe let's say one, that you wanted to put music underneath this interview. Sounding a lot better. The noise from the microphone has gone away and now my voice is a little bit more clear. And if we go down the list here, I can reduce rumble, I can de-hum, I can de-s with if things are too c on your video, you can de-s it, you can reduce reverb, you can add dynamics, which is basically compression. And every time you check a box here in the essential sound panel, if we go over to effect controls, look, Look what happens over here. Every time I click one of these boxes, it adds an audio effect automatically that is controlled by all of these sliders, which is very, very convenient, especially if you don't know what any of these things are, right? So let's uncheck all of these. And you can, you know, play around with this to your heart's content. I really like reduced noise. I really like the clarity uh, dynamics one. So you have natural or you have focused. And basically it's the level of compression. So all the way down at zero, this is what it sounds like. That you wanted to put music underneath this interview. Okay. And all the way up crank to the other side at 10. That you wanted to put music underneath. Obviously, you'd never go all the way to 10, but you can control the compression and the loudness of the dialogue a little bit with that slider, which is fantastic. It's easy. And if you don't know anything about compression or EQing or DSing or dereverbing, if you don't know anything about that, this makes it so simple for you to understand because it's just some sliders. And I would recommend to play with all of those sliders based on the media that you are working with. What we're doing here is not going to be the same for you, but go ahead and play around. Speaking of playing 
playing around, there are some really fun uh, EQ presets, right? So if we click on EQ and you can see the preset is set to background voice where it's kind of lopping off a lot of the high frequencies in an equalizer here. But if I come down here and I go to intercom, it kind of shows you what the EQ curve looks like. And now if we play this, that you wanted to put music underneath this interview. It sounds like I'm coming out of an intercom. Who knew that the intercom preset would make it sound like, uh, okay, anyway, so there's a lot of uh, really great uh, presets that you can kind of start off with here. Podcast voice will kind of boost those mid and high frequencies to give you a little bit more crispness to your vocals. Let's listen to that that you wanted to put music underneath this interview. And if you crank the amount, uh, you see the EQ curve kind of adjusting there visually underneath that. Uh, you can enhance the speech, you can add some reverb, let's do that and let's go uh, auditorium, right? And crank it all the way up. You wanted to put music underneath this Okay, it sounds like I'm underwater in a submarine, but you get the point, right? So whether you have sound effects or dialogue or music, drop them onto your timeline. Keep your tracks organized, by the way. Keep your music tracks on one track or two tracks. Don't make it all over the place. You don't want music track on track one and then track five and then track six. It gets really messy. But with the Essential Sound Panel, you can assign all of those things different characteristics and then duck things and kind of manipulate things based on the tags and the characteristics of that audio. And you can add a bunch of effects and control it with a single slider in the Essential Sound Panel that you otherwise wouldn't have access to if you were just dropping those audio effects onto your audio track itself and it becomes a little less confusing. For example, if I click on edit under this dynamics processing, it gives you this S curve here and a lot of people don't actually know what this is, but it's really nice because I can actually just adjust everything here with a single slider and it'll tell you down here the compression ratio and all of that stuff where it's expanding and compressing and the different ratios associated to it. So it's really nice that this is just linked and you don't have to know an astronomical amount about audio engineering or anything like that because it kind of makes it easy to use and a one-stop shop. So that being said, if you've never used the Essential Sound Panel before, congratulations, you've just learned a new skill and leveled up your XP in Adobe Premiere. Very proud of you. Also, thumbs up, drop a comment, subscribe to my channel because I showed you this thing. If you already knew about it, maybe you learned something new. Maybe you watched my video and you're like, hey, I didn't know about that specific feature in the Essential Sound Panel. Well, either way, uh, as long as you're here and watching my face and listening to me talk about editing, that's really all that matters, you know? And what else matters is uh, you definitely, please drop a comment and a thumbs up. Drop a comment and a thumbs up and subscribe because it makes the YouTube algorithm happy. And I like it when the YouTube algorithm is happy. There are links in the video description below, which will take you to a bunch of stuff. You can follow me on social media. You can go to Dropbox and download other assets that I've given out in the past. It will take you uh, to you know AE Juice and Epidemic Sound and Invato Elements and all of the great stuff that I use every single day when I create videos in the post-production world. All of that stuff is down in the video description below. Uh, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for watching this video, and I apologize about the clickbaity title, but hey, you know, it's hard out here these days and we just got to get them clicks. So thank you for commenting and dropping a thumbs up and subscribing, and I will see you in the next one.